Check, check. <coughs> What's up, party people? I'm Peter, and I'm. With, I am Nathan. I am with the most condescending um, man in sports and entertainment, Nathan Newman. I hate the word sports and entertainment. Make that wrestling. You see that? That's what I'm talking about. So <laughs> condescending. Like I couldn't even. I couldn't even. It wasn't even a second after I said that until. You, like, put something down. Very true. I know, I know. Touche. So, you, you are, it's been, it's, it's been a minute and a half, but um, you're now listening to the New Day Podcast. How long has it been, Nathan? I think it's been about a month. I'd have to go back and check um, to it's, be exactly sure, but it's been a while. Yeah, I, I, would, I would almost say two months. Like I think it would be definitely two months since the last time we've uh, actually spoke. I um and man, a shit ton of stuff has gone down. But before we go into that, I just want to like for those that are listening to this podcast. So before me and Nathan would get up every other Tuesday, every other Friday, and this is a straight shoot right now because we haven't actually discussed how we're going to do this moving forward. It seems that your um, time schedule has changed. Yeah, because I got a new job. So I'm available on Sundays and Mondays, though. Sunday? For a preference. Sundays and Mondays. Okay. Correct. So did you want to do this, like, um, every week? Because here's the thing. I get off work. It, it's it's kind of a dip in what's going on at my job right now. So I get out around maybe two thirty, three o'clock, and normally Mondays I'm just chilling until Raw starts. So if you have a week open, I mean you have your Mondays open from like say yeah. say four to five, we can actually. I have Mondays open all day. Okay. Basically so, until Raw starts. Yeah. Okay. So what we're planning to do for those who are listening. We we're gonna move weekly. We do this weekly. Yeah, that works for me. And this is basically going to be our raw pre-show conversation. All right. By the way, the last podcast that we did together was on June fifth, so it's been about two months. Yeah. Wow. So what we're gonna do now? Because before we would just sort of have like. Uh, conversation talk and we're still gonna do that but i feel like as a pre-show i mean like being that it's monday is before uh raw we're talk about what you know i just go get some information from the uh from dot com see what the fuck they got going on you know like today the return of brock lesnar kind of stuff we talk about that shit but then you watch all the wednesday shows all of them i watch our ROH on Saturday, I watch TNA, I watch Lucha Underground, I watch NXT on Thursday. Okay, see, I end up watching almost all of those things um, on, like, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It, it, okay. It, there's no real, uh, I guess, chronological what I watch, whether I watch Lucha Underground first or whether I watch NXT first or anything like that. But what I like to do for this, moving forward, the New Day podcast, it would be a pre, pre-show pre like raw pre-show conversation, and then we'll discuss um, just points on, say, because I don't watch NXT. I thought you didn't like NXT. I do, like, but I don't like it right now because of the turnover. Okay. Meaning because there's so many people on the main roster that are coming up, so NXT right now is kind of very forgettable. NXT, or, not really... or, t- NXT or TNA? NXT. Okay, I said TNA. No, you said NXT. I apologize. So I thought you were uh, like TNA. TNA. No, I do not watch, and I ne- probably never will. Okay, so 
All right. They lost me a long time ago. All right, that's what's up. So we're just going to uh, discuss all those, like, just, uh, you know, maybe ten, like, five, ten minutes just about each one of those. And then maybe if there's something newsworthy, we'll talk about that. Like, you know, for instance, um, the death of uh, Roddy Piper. Or, you know, we haven't, and we haven't talked at all about the whole Hogan thing. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been a while since we spoke, so I don't know if you even want to go into that at some point. Um, yeah, we can. Okay. It's all up to you, man. All right. All right. Along I've, for the ride. I've definitely spoken enough about it, but um, there's one thing that I definitely want to probably want to go into just for that purpose. Um, just, But that's all. But let's go ahead and, and talk about, um, first off, I want to send my condolences to the Piper family. Uh, we lost another great. We, they're dropping like flies, Nathan. Yeah, they really are, and it's sad. It's really sad. Like, uh, you know what it reminds me of? Have you ever watched uh, The Never Ending Story? No. Oh, my God. That's my Can't favorite. say that I have. It's my, it's, it's my favorite movie of all time. Like, it, okay. it, if I had to pinpoint one movie that I feel like is the greatest movie of all time is The Never Ending Story. And it's about this boy who comes across this book. And the book itself is about this uh, this thing that exists within this book, within like this uh, this tale, and it's called the nothing. And the nothing is basically eating, because the book itself, and then the deep thoughts on this movie, it's just, it's a big fun movie. You probably know Falcor, the big white flying dog. You probably heard that in a reference or something. Yeah. But anyway, just to make it quick, this nothing is basically destroying this fantasy world. And I've, I've realized as I got older what the nothing was. The nothing was basically this, it's the idea of people growing up and losing their, their um, what's that word I want to use, uh, imaginations and books that they read as a kid. All that stuff is like going away because the new kids aren't reading the old literature anymore, fantasies and stuff. And I feel like that sort of, it's sort of like with wrestling with these dying wrestlers. Like, p- pieces of our childhood are finally, you know, going away. You know, part of the mm-hmm. cycle, you know? Sure. And uh, pi- between Piper, um, Jesus, you got Piper, you got what, what that went down with Hogan, uh, Dusty Rhodes, you know, Ultimate Warrior. Uh, Macho Man. Macho Man, Randy Savage. Yeah, dude, uh, it's, you know, it's it's something to it's sort of to look at and face and be like, man, we are getting older. Like when our parents and their their superstars were dying, starting to die when they were kids, you know, and I go like, damn, this is what growing up is losing, losing icons and people we looked up to as as children. What 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 do you, what do you have? Like, what are your fond memories of things that like Piper has done? I guess my. Like, um, well, I gotta tell you, and this is, this might be an interesting story, it might not be, depending on who you are, or what you are into, but when I first started watching wrestling, I was three years old, I, so that was 1988, I don't remember much from that year, but my first real memory of wrestling was watching WrestleMania Five with my dad, um, which took place in 1989, when I was still three years old, almost going to be four. Um, But one thing I do remember very distinctly off that show was Piper's Pit. Because you had Rowdy Piper do the thing with Brother Love, and then he... Brother Love came out with a skirt, and he thought he was... Or a kilt, and Piper thought he was mocking him, so they went back and forth for about five, ten minutes until Piper ripped his kilt off and then revealing red underwear and he ran up the steps of the um, Trump Plaza. And then you had uh, Morton Downey Jr. come out and that whole thing with the uh, fire extinguisher where he, uh, Morton Downey Jr. kept blowing smoke in, or cigarette smoke in Piper's face and Piper told him he wanted a cigarette so he went and got him one and then Piper lifted up one of the the gimmick stools that he had and there was a fire extinguisher underneath it and as soon as 
Morton Downey Jr. turned around, he blasted him in the face with the fire extinguisher. So that is really my first memory of Rowdy Piper was from that show. For those um, who are listening and don't know who Morton Downey Jr. is, he was like a figure from like the late 70s into the 80s. He was a New York radio host. That's what he was? Or a comedian? That's correct. And he, he was a radio host. And he was a piece of garbage. He was, yeah. He was, he, was, he was probably one of the first super shock value radio hosts that America had ever seen. He was uh, very misogynist. He was very sexist. He was very, you know, race heavy. You know, whatever just came out of his mouth came out of his mouth. And he wasn't someone looked upon so lightly. But for some reason, he stayed in the attention of a lot of people, which comes Roddy Piper, who was basically setting the same standard. Um, so, you you know, that in itself between Mort Downey Jr. and that scene and, and Piper was basically letting the world know that Mort Downey Jr. ain't shit compared to <laughs> he basically shut him down with that with that uh, with that spot by spraying him with the uh, fire. Yeah. You know, people wanted to fucking punch Mort Downey Jr. in the face for years. And that was probably one of the first times that someone actually retaliated because he was such a jerk. Um, well, and that crowd just blew up as oh, yeah. soon as that happened. Oh, yeah. Babyface. Like, that was... Ba- yeah, they hate that shit up. <laughs> that was babyface material right there. But, yeah, yeah. man, like, I, it's funny because I grew up um, watching uh, NWA... Uh, WCW, so I didn't get to watch a lot of WWE growing up. See, and I was WWF. I was more WWF, WWE at the time, and then I got into NWA, WCW side of things in like 1990, 1991. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was later into the NWA, WCW fold than the WWF fold, but um, the WWF, the early stuff, is where most of my childhood memories are drawn from. See, I have to go back and reference a lot of that stuff. I got to go back and look because, again, I grew up a WCW guy, and whenever I got to see any WWF stuff, is was when I went over to like my aunt's house or my cousin's house because they were really big into like uh, WWF. Um, I wasn't into it as a kid because it, the irony is that it was it was cartoony as hell. You know, it was like super cartoony. So, and I well, I really like. The really stripped down version of, I guess, the package that NWA and WCW had. So there's not a lot of, you know, I would say match by match, thing by thing, Roddy Piper that I remember like distinctively. But I do remember whenever he was around, I knew I was paying attention to see what the fuck. Because I knew when he was in the vicinity, whether in the ring or for Piper's pit, he was about to piss somebody off. Well, he's about to, like, shit was about to go down. And that's one of my fondest memories. I think you go through all the superstars, even Hogan, Jimmy Fox, Flash Snooker, Honky Talk Man, the Ultimate Warrior. Even though Ultimate Warrior was, like, one of my all-time favorites, he didn't he didn't get my attention like Piper did. And, you know, when you're a kid and you see a guy like that, I mean, I'm he got a lot of heat from me because I thought he was a real jerk. You know, that was like. Well, yeah, but back then you're a kid, you believe everything. Yeah, so I, I was like, this motherfucker the character. is the biggest jerk ever. But he just he he got my attention, and it just goes to show a guy like that, and he's one of the rare like workers that basically did any and everything on his terms. You know, and I think that kind of revolutionized like the business of wrestling. What Piper did, where he would call, you know basically call his own matches. And make sure that he always left with the victory. He was like, fuck that. If I lose, I don't eat. So I'm winning everything. Even up against someone to the likes of Hogan, who was basically the face of wrestling. And he was like, no, I'm not laying down for you. It'd be DQs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, yeah. You get like some count outs or things like that. But like a clean pen on him, you just never saw. So as I got older, I really started to respect the fact that he was like this guy basically calling his shots. He was like CM Punk before CM Punk, you know, this kind of guy who was just like, you know, I know this business. I know this business better than you. So things are going to go my way or I'm going to hightail it the fuck out of here. And uh, I read, um, it was, I think it was the other day that I read it, but there was a stat 
that said like d- that Piper in WWF when he was there um, for the first eight years of his career had never been pinned. <laughs> incredible, but, incredible stuff. Yeah, incredible stuff. That's that's incredible. That's like uh, Bruno San Martino status. To you, <laughs> what you think about it? But he never held a title. He, I mean, never held the world title. He had the Intercontinental belt, but um. He, yeah. Do you think he goes down in history as the greatest performer that's never worn the, the heavyweight championship? In WWF or just like in, WCW all around? All around. All around. Okay, because if it, it's just WWF, then I would say Ricky Steamboat. Steamboat. But if it's if you're just talking, if you're talking all around, then yeah, perhaps Rowdy Piper would be that guy. Yeah. He. Yeah. Hands down. I mean. Again, growing up watching WCW, you know, Sting won the championship. You know, Rhodes won the championship. Uh, Mr. Perfect never won the championship. He won it in AWA. Okay, but he never won well, WWE. He did not win it in WWE or WCW. Um, who else? Um, Million Dollar Man. Well, technically, he bought the title. <laughs> so, technically, he did hold it. For a day. Okay. Because what happened was, I don't know if you remember this, but Andre the Giant beat, I think it was Hogan. I, I do remember. For the, for the belt. And then Andre sold the title to the Million Dollar Man. And then the Million Dollar Man was stripped of the title. And this set up the WrestleMania Four tournament for the vacant title that Macho Man won in 88. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So okay, he technic- technically he won it, but yeah, but you could go down a whole list, and most people that you know, you grew up to, that were like really given a big push, they held the belt, and he was one of those guys. To be as big as legendary as he is, it's really hard to believe that he never ever won it. You know, it's insane. well, in some ways though, back then you didn't need it. No, no, to validate your career, like now you need the title, but to be somebody important but back then you didn't and he was one of those guys that he had some good intercontinental title reigns and but he never need he was one of those guys that he didn't need the world title yeah because he was still able to be entertaining and be a dick and have people hate him and draw like hell yeah draw like hell you knew you knew you wanted to see his ass whooped so bad because he was such a jerk. And then, you know, the infamous coconut, coconut gate. <laughs> <laughs> and, and um, you know, him painting his body half black. And and then, like, what? what just, just, just crazy shit. But then, you know, it's funny. And I think I'm probably the only person. You're probably, this will probably take you back uh, a couple of notches. But I've never seen They Live. Great, great movie. I've never seen it. I probably it, it's gonna be it's gonna be like a, what's the word we use priority this week to just check it out. It's probably, or I'll take that back. It wasn't a great movie, but it was. It's great because it's so respected and it's become a cult classic mm-hmm. over the years. Mm-hmm. So that's why it's great. But like story wise and like from a cinematography standpoint, I. I graduated with a degree in film, mm-hmm. so I know a lot about that stuff. But mm-hmm. from that standpoint, it's not a great movie. But if you look at it from like when it came out to what it is now, and people still talk about it, it's great. Yeah, yeah, it's like so gaudy that it became over time like this amazing thing. And, and it's funny because I mean, I'm speaking as 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 hearsay. You know, and clips that I've seen and quotes that I've read or, or heard clips of and what have you. Um, he, uh, you look at today's movies and you wish they were that entertaining. You know, it, it, it's cheesy and as gaudy as it may seem, you, you, you only wish that movies sometimes took a step back and went back to simpler times of how they made shit, got shit done with like a, a small budget, you know. Like, you really find out what really works and what doesn't work because you're working on such a shoestring budget. Um, sure. Yeah, and uh, just, I don't know, you just take a guy like Piper, you make him your front man and just let him go. It's just like, yeah, man, 
go for it. But yeah, man, rest rest in peace, Roddy Piper, man. Like that's that's a huge. Sixty one years old, died in his sleep. Well, he had a heart yeah. attack in his sleep. Yeah. That sucks, man. So what? I haven't heard your view on the whole Hogan thing. Uh. Um, well, I'll say it like this. Okay, Hogan, he's an icon in professional wrestling. And he is one of the guys that basically, if it wasn't for Hulk Hogan, wrestling would not be what it is today because him and Vince McMahon pretty much changed the entire industry overnight. You know the story. Um... I don't agree with what he said, but considering when or considering the timing of the interview and the fact that it was so old, I mean, we're talking about an interview that came out and it just surfaced. Oh, you're talking about an interview or you're talking about a sex tape conversation? Well, it's both. Well, it was the more interview it's more, and the sex tape conversation. Well, it was more the sex tape conversation than it was the interview. The interview just surfaced kind of out of the blue. Okay. Uh, uh, people knew about I that. I haven't heard. Or, yeah, the sex tape conversation, that's when he dropped the N-bomb, correct? Uh, yeah, and I have my I have my view on that, um, too. But, yeah, it, it ended up, I think someone caught wind to that and then immediately brought the old, uh, that interview with Who Kid up to the surface as, okay. as another thing. Because I was confused at first. I actually did a video uh, talking about it, and then I ended up having to take it down because it was the wrong source of the firing and then when i found out that it was basically comments he made about uh brooks boyfriend at the time uh, okay i went back and you know i deleted everything and then went back and wrote and did another um video audio about um basically uh, accountability okay so that's the one you're talking about because i haven't actually seen that physical video but i've read the transcript yeah so and the way I am, a white person should never say that word. So given who he is, that doesn't give him an excuse that, oh, it's okay to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't blame the WWE for what they're doing, what they did, because they want to get, they wanted to distance themselves away from the situation as fast as they could um, because they are a publicly traded company, and if word got out then they would look bad for associating with somebody who's now apparently a racist what i don't agree with is the fact that they pretty much are chris ben wong him from history i think but here's 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 my take because it's you know you can and and the thing about the wwe and this decision and i don't again i i'm very indifferent about it because I know the hypocrisy, but you have to go into, again, it was a PR move. They got in front of it. It wasn't like an outcry. Um, it was basically the inquire. I think they shot them a link before anyone else saw it. Um, and they say, hey, we got this information. You might want to make a decision, right? So they got in front of it. And then there was more of an outcry of uh, the WWE making such, doing such a swift move of getting rid of him, there was more of an outcry of him getting fired than it would than it was him staying on. You know what I'm okay. saying? Okay. And 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 it and it boils down. And I make this concise because I want to move on to um, say what may happen on Raw tonight. Is that the conversation to me is being sort of convoluted by the fact that he used the word nigger, right? So the word nigger is a very, to me, at this point in time, has become so so much a part of pop culture, you know, through hip hop music and, you know, just this thing, you know, like the word nigger. You hear nigger, co- co- com- comedy, you know, um, music. Yeah. It's, it's become slang. It's become slang from not, for not only black kids, but white kids, too. You know, I, but, I, all my Snapchats and all that shit, I, got, I, hear, I hear white people... It's like, look at this nigga over here. And I'm just like, oh, you know, it, because it, I don't even use the word. I'm using it now yeah. in context to the conversation, yeah. you know. Um, I don't use it. I don't use it in conversation, you know. I've used it before 
and I'm a, I, I account to that. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. You know how some motherfuckers would be like, oh, yeah, the Washington football team. Yeah, you know, the R word. And then they don't take accountability that they've been watching sports their entire life and been saying Redskins, you know? So they, like, disclaim it altogether without owning it up to being to using the word. I'm owning it up to using the word, nigga. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. I, and I say now that I don't use it, it's like, you know, it makes me cringe when I hear other people hear it. But that's the con- that's the con- that's the content of the problem with Hulk Hogan. The context to me is that regardless of what he said, it was how he felt. And it brings me back to Donald Sterling, you know, when the whole, you know, Clippers thing went down and him having his team taken from him. He didn't even say the word. And it was means to have his team removed from him because of the way he felt about black people. Now, if Hogan felt that way eight years ago, what is going to miraculously be different, you know? And, and, and I feel like people are downplaying it by saying, like, oh, yeah, um, he used the N-word. It's like, no, it's not that he used the N-word. The way he felt about Hogan's boyfriend was very dehumanizing. You see what I'm saying? Like, he saw yeah. him no more... The only worth that he would have even have if he was actually bigger and richer. That's it. That's the only use for anyone in his family, let alone his daughter or any of his association, deal with just some black guy who's who's not even worth the time, you know, because he's black. And that's why I, that's that's how I pinpoint this. And it sucks because. So you're saying like when he okay he said he would rather him date a, or Hogan basically said he would rather have her date a, uh, a basically eight foot tall one. Uh huh. Yeah. Because he would be a basketball, because he would be a professional basketball player, and he'd be rich. Yeah, but that's like, just because you're black and you're eight feet tall doesn't mean you're a basketball player. That's a total racial stereotype. Well, that just that's another plot. That's another that's another layer to the surface. You know. And, yeah, in the environment right now, the racial environment, especially when dealing with blacks and, say, what's been happening with, like, law, like, cops and the killing of a lot of black men and women recently and uh, or even the, the church shootings, there's not a lot of compassion for black folk once you really think about it. You hear more people outcry about, like, whoever was the black person probably deserved it. Or uh, the person who shot up that church was more of the victim and all of this thing to where it's like, where's the compassion for black people? You know, like, why can't I be outraged by Hogan's, you know, what he says and how he feels about blacks? Uh, I I just go, to desensitize the idea that black people do have it pretty rough. And I'm not saying that, like, not other people. I, I'm, I'm t- we're talking distinctively about black people. The fact that we can't catch a break in terms of sh- having compassion shown towards us um, in the history of civil rights and you know slavery sl- of the civil rights and even today what's been happening in, in, the, in the, the, the climate, even though we make strides and, and steps and strides, every time I turn around, it's always when shit goes down, there's never really any real compassion towards you know a white person uh either killing or talking down to a black person and it's just a strange thing to me it's such a strange thing and and i feel like it's being uh, being did this disconstruct deconstructed to the idea of him just saying the word nigga because it's being said all the time by all the black people black people say it all the time why can't no that's not the issue it's the way he feels but it's and another thing too that it's I want to bring up, it's and I've heard this argument too, is that there's a lot of white people that say that, oh, if I say the that specific word, and I'm not going to say the word that I'm talking about, but if they say it with an A, then it like an A sound at the end, then it's okay. No, I mean versus an E R, and I do not agree with that at all. But it's banana, banana, baloney, balagna. Um, there's only one word. There's only two things that white people can't do, right? 
<laughs> that stay in the sun for a long period of time <laughs> and say the word nigga. It's just one of those things. And it's only one word. It's not like us blacks over here, like we got this cool club where we are all like exclusive cool club where we're looking at white people going like, nah, you can't say this. You know, we're not doing that. <laughs> you yeah. Know? You know what I'm saying? And and most whites are like, well, if they're doing it, why can't we? And, and that shouldn't be the conversation. You know, the average what I think anyone who's a non-black should be like, hey, black folk, how about y'all stop saying it so goddamn much? You know? You see what I'm saying? But it's the other yeah. way around. It's like, well, why can't we say it? And I just go like, that is so weird. And now, again, the context, the content of the issue with Hogan is being, again, centralized towards the word itself versus how he feels about black. And I just go, that's just the wrong, it's just the wrong way to look at it. It's just completely the wrong way to look at it. And So you're saying that the argument shouldn't be based on what word he actually said? but his attitude towards that race of people in general. Yeah, or anyone non-white. For that even matter. if he didn't, even if he decided to use the same, do the same rant without that word, you would feel the same way then? Well, context versus context. Now, he could have been okay. like, he could have been like, man, my nigga, you know, he'd be like, man, like, my nigga, let's uh, just, I don't know, Bubba the Love Sponge. Man, my nigga love, Bubba the Love Sponge hooked me up with, you know, let me fuck his wife. That's cool shit. That's my nigga right there, right? You know, you hear how that sounds? Yeah. It, it sounds, it doesn't sound as if he's demeaning somebody. You know what I'm saying? But the weird part about it to me, okay, is that he's saying the word in reference to a white person. Yeah. So he, that's kind of where it loses me. Well, he's saying, he's like, well, man, why she got to date that nigger? If he was a tall nigger, he'd be a rich nigger, basically. But see, he wasn't talking about Bubba the Love Sponge. No, 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 no. I know. I just threw Bubba the Love Sponge out there as, a, okay. as an example of saying, let's take this word, put it in another sentence, and then compare it to the sentence, to the transcript of Hogan's and why he's in the position that he is right now. You see what I'm saying? Context versus content. People get that really, like, there's a blurred line in between what's being said and what's being felt. And the idea of, like, private, you know, the idea of, like, oh, but it was private. Oh, Donald Sterling was in private. You don't use that as a defense. Because just like Wade Keller says, he goes, that means that anyone who's a non-white, with that that defense, any non-white, any any non-white would just assume that all white people in private talk that way and feel that way, but they don't bring that shit out in public. You know what I'm saying? And it, it, it is a valid point. I think, you know, it's a valid point where I'm just looking at someone as like, well, this is who they are in public. Who they are in private, they probably hate my fucking guts. Right? That, that's when you defend it with, you know, the idea that it was a private affair. Right? Yeah. And I, and I wish that argument would really go go to rest because you don't want to paint that picture. You don't want to paint that paint that picture. You know what I'm saying? Because there's a hell of a lot of white people, maybe more so than not, that do not view black people in that light at all, or even think to use the word. Along with black people who just stay stay the hell away from that word, or you know, feel like who yeah, I don't know, like black elitists, you know what I'm saying? Like that look down on blacks who are aren't at to the same position that they are. Cause that's like, you know, that's all that's old like uh what's the word? Um sl house slave mentality, you know what I'm saying? Like sure. it, it, it's just weird. The, being black is so complex, man. It really is. But here's the thing, and we're ended on this and unless you want to get a last word on on, on this conversation. Being black is so fucking complex. It really is. And when you're talking about the climate of today, and you and you want to say things, whether involving blacks, LGBT, uh, you know, Latinos, all that stuff, you are helped. I mean, you have to watch yourself. 
you got to hold yourself accountable for what the fuck comes out of your mouth. And, yep. if, and if you have a certain feeling about a certain race uh, via stereotypes of this, that, and the other, um, I mean, trust me, being six foot six, black dude, I used to have dreadlocks now, I'm bald, and I'm walking down the street, and I, you know, people are clutching their purses and locking their cars at the sight of me, things of that nature. You're six six? Yeah, I'm six six. Holy crap, I didn't think you were that tall. Yeah, I'm tall enough. And, <laughs> and it hurts, it hurts my feelings, you know? Um, and if you, and that's more closet racism than anything, but yeah, you gotta be responsible for how you feel and how what you say. And if you get caught being a bigot or a sexist or like you know a racist, you know what I'm saying? And someone calls you out, you deserve every bit of transgression you deserve because nobody has time for that shit. You know what I'm saying? No one. Very true. Do you have time for it? Not really. Okay. No. <laughs> um. So did you have any last words on this and then, then we move on? Well, going forward, I was just going to say that Hulk Hogan is probably just going to be a guy that is there to me. I mean, with his being terminated from WWE, I mean, it's not that big of a blow to them because at this point he was a um, just an ambassador or whatever the hell they term they used. The only thing that it's going to cost WWE and Hogan, well, it's going to cost Hogan and his ego one last match at WrestleMania 32, and it may sacrifice some of the buys and some of the attendance for WrestleMania 32. But I think that's fine, but I also think that Hogan will be back soon. Yeah. I, within WWE. And I think that's the whole point of WWE making such a swift move. It's like, let's just detach ourselves from him, give it time, let it play out, and then come to a decision on where you want him to be. I think yep. I think even from black people, um, wrestling fans, they were probably receiving with open arms. Just as long as he gets some sort of fucking racial, like... What's the word? Like, uh, rehab or some bullshit. You Intolerance know? training? Yeah, some bullshit like that. You know, whatever. I, me, personally, I'm indifferent. And I, I spoke about that in the last uh, 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 Peter and Jake. Um, I'm very indifferent. I go, it's kind of hard. It's going to be hard for me not to view him as, as not this person. Um, he saw me and people like me in a different light. And that ain't cool, you know. And that, and that's all I say. Yeah. But yeah. WWE, he's not completely gone. If this is all a business transaction, he's probably on the phone with Vince McMahon right now. Um, and he on the phone with Triple H. I tell you that much. <laughs> Triple H was his ass gone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, like, because Triple H and Vince McMahon seem to butt heads in a lot of things, and I think this Hogan issue is going to be one of them. But Triple H I think, hates Hogan. I think, well, and he probably should. Yeah. But I think Vince McMahon is going to bring him back in some capacity at one point um, against a begrudging Triple H, because I know Triple H isn't going to like the idea of bringing him back. Of course, yeah. And, and as soon, like, if he comes back, then that's fine. But as soon as Vince McMahon either retires and or dies, then Hogan would be gone again. Yeah, he, yeah. <laughs> they won't even close the casket. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They'd probably fire Hogan at Vince's funeral. For yeah. Yo, as soon as he go flatline, I don't think that flatline second is a, a second into it before they got rid of fucking Hogan. But let's move on uh, to um, tonight's Raw. Now, how do you feel about what's been going on um, as of late since the last pay-per-view? Are you happy with the product at all? I am not. Um, I think I've said I said this a month ago, and I'll say it again. Triple uh, A is my favorite, one of my favorite promotions right now. That and tri- uh, Ring of Honor, along with Lucha Underground. So I'd much rather watch like. Triple A, ROH, anything I can get my hands on instead of WWE because WWE is just not doing anything for me. Um, and it's sad because SummerSlam time is supposed to be a really good time 
kind of like WrestleMania time was supposed to be a really good time. I am going to Raw in two weeks on August 17th when it's at the Target Center. Where are you sitting? At, what? You got good seats? Uh, they're in the lower, lower level, so yes. You hard cam? I'm not sure exactly where we're at. Okay. I think we're facing the entranceway. Okay, okay. Um, but, um, so I'm looking forward to the show in a sense because it'll be there live. I'll be there live. And it'll be a different experience to when I'm watching it on TV. A lot of children, man. This could be a lot, yeah. lot of kids. But, um, yeah, it's like the WWE product as a whole right now isn't really doing much for me. Well, And what, it's a sad thing because we're on the road to SummerSlam. Once SummerSlam gets here, the party's over because September through December are like the shittiest months to be a WWE fan. Well, to, to layer on top of that, and this is one of the rants I had, and I think um, I think in the Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling, I think that was 46, where it was just me. I couldn't find anybody else to talk to because no one likes to talk to me. Um, <laughs> um, other than you and you don't count. Uh... Because I don't really like talking to you either. I just kind of. I can hang it. up on you and leave you by yourself right now. You could. <laughs> <laughs> um, is that this period right now? You talk about the NFL off season. It's the prime time to win to win viewership. I mean, you do any and everything, tooth and nail. To make sure that when the football season rolls back around, that someone like me, who's a huge football fan, is biting their nails, stressing like hell to decide what I'm going to watch on the evening. Am I going to watch, you know, the Packers versus Bears? You know what I'm saying? Am I going to watch, you know, the Patriots versus the Broncos? Or am I going to watch this Monday Night Raw? See, and for me, the decision's easy because it's always going to be Raw. Raw. Or Frost sucks, I'm just going to turn it off and go to sleep. See, I mean, I'm a football fan, and a lot of wrestling fans are football fans, and I just feel like they did a bad, they're doing a bad job to make sure that anyone who's, you know, both fans actually have a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, let yeah. me make this decision really tough for you. They're, they're not doing that. Um, but jumping to, how do you feel about, say, what's happening with the Divas? Um, see, I like what they're doing with the Divas, but I don't think in the long term it's really going to matter. And that's my biggest fear. Um, I like that they're, they brought up Charlotte, they brought up Becky, they brought up Sasha, all in one fell swoop. I think it's great. I think it's going to go a lot way, or a long way in making the Divas division better, but I'm sick of the entire Divas Revolution hashtag on Twitter, and I'm just sick of hearing about it because they, whenever fans start it, because it, it's all the fans' fault for starting to give a, give Divas a chance hashtag, and then it turned into Divas Revolution, and WWE always takes stuff that the fans create, and then they push it too far if the fans don't do that already. I, I, it's too much too soon. I still think... Um... Yeah. I, I, too much too soon. Um, like if it w- yeah, like if it was me, I would have brought up Charlotte first. Yeah. And then brought up Sasha and Becky Lynch a little bit later, like maybe a month or two apart from each other. I would have brought but up But the pro- the oh. problem with bringing three people up at the same time, especially if they're women or men, in this case three women, yeah. you're going you're going to run the risk of having one of them stand out while the other two are going to be forgotten about. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I think Sasha and I think Charlotte are going to be the standouts, Mm -hmm. and I think Becky Lynch is going to be the one that people are going to forget about. And, you know, it's funny because I I like to look at those three as, like, sort of like the female shield. Like, let's look at at that as that kind of a dynamic. No. No, 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 hear me out. No, 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 hear me out. Hear me out. I ain't talking about, like, they are the S.H.I.E.L.D., female version of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm saying, like, the dynamic of these three NXT talents coming up to the top. Now, you got, you see, you see 
the same dynamic to a certain extent. You got the big one, you know, the big one, uh, which is Charlotte Flair. You have Becky Lynch is sort of kind of like the, uh, he's she's like the Seth Rollins. And you look at someone like Sasha Banks, who's more like Dean Ambrose to a certain extent. Just, you know, it's a broad, just hear me no. out. No. Just hear me out. I disagree. As much as I like to think that, as much as I like to think that Sasha Banks is going to be the one, I don't think she's going to be the one. I think Becky Lynch. I do. I think Becky Lynch is going to be that one. I mean, you get Charlotte. Charlotte's going to be like Reigns. And then I'd imagine at some point, because I think Lynch, Lynch basically, she's been at it longer. She's more of a vet. She she has more going on with her wrestling ability than, say, both Charlotte and uh, Banks combined, as long as she's been in it. And I think that holds a lot of, I think that holds a lot more weight. And I think if she can actually be a good heel, so I think when it all boils down to it, I think she'll be the one with the belt first between, uh, before Charlotte and Banks. And I, I know that's about of a – that's weird. I know that's weird. Well, and you say, okay, they've got a female shield dynamic. I do not agree with that. But what I will say is they've got, like, if you include Bailey into that um, – Equation? Into that equation, they've got a female four horsemen – Mentality, and I'm not talking about the four horsewomen that are in UFC. I'm talking about the four wrestlers who are in WWE. I know. So, but I'm just like, and well, and there. I don't know if you know about this, but there's this feud going on Twitter apparently about the four horsewomen in MMA versus the four horsewomen in WWE, and I think the whole thing's stupid. Yeah, I don't pay attention. And I'm like. I know I probably shouldn't get into this part of it, but I'm just going to say this and I'll leave it alone. The four horsewomen in wrestling are a lot more talented than the four horsewomen in MMA because the four horsewomen in MMA, I like Jessamyn Duke, but if you think about it, there's one standout in Ronda Rousey and the other three don't matter. Well, and you're talking about a, a sport that, that it's not the best in the world in it. You, yep. see, you see what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. the, the conversation about Ronda Rousey being like one of the most dominant. I was like, no. Um, there's this tennis player that goes by the name of Serena Williams, and she's facing the best in the world all the time, and she's making them look real stupid. Yep. It, women's MMA, and I'm not dogging women's M- MMA, but it's women's MMA. You're not facing the best in the world. You're facing girls that want to fight, right? And it's the yep. whole thing with this whole you give divas a chance. Or uh, there's more we could go into it, but we'll we're, we're talk more about it next time because th- th- this is going to be um, we're going to be talking about this for quite some time. Um, yeah. But the um, this whole like. We can wrestle. Hey, look at us. We can wrestle too. We can do like eight to twelve minute matches. I think that's that's gonna grow old, and we're gonna want to know. How, we we're gonna want to invest in these girls to a certain extent, you know. Like we want. Like okay, we get it. You can fight. Now give us a reason to invest in you outside of your ring ability. But that's what. So it's, you're basically saying that we're gonna run into the same problem with the women that we're running into. With the the men's roster, because some of the men's talent, they're good wrestlers, but they don't. WWE doesn't give us a certain aspect of their characters that we can latch onto. So you said it's like it's like a mirror image. Of we don't get enough character. We get we get too much fighting, not enough character uh, from the guys, and we need more. Yep. Of, yeah. Yeah. And then but like and. Like, as far as character development, unless you're a John Cena, unless, well, Randy Orton used to be that way, but he, I guess he doesn't count anymore. But if, unless you're a John Cena or you're the WWE champion in Seth Rollins or, like, a Dean Ambrose or a Roman Reigns, so basically a guy in the main event scene, they don't care about your character development. Yeah. Well, I have to hand it to them. Um, I didn't like how they made uh, Kevin Owens into, like, this desperate fool for the belt. 
I didn't like that. I hated it. Um, but they are staying on top of his character development. I, I have to give them kudos for at least keeping him storyline driven. Um, even if he's not, because everyone's like, oh, he's going to drop down the card. It's like, wait a minute, that Cena feud, even though it was pretty high profile, it wasn't the main event of anything. <laughs> but, okay, when you're, it wasn't the main event, but he was feuding with the star of the company. Yeah, again, it's high profile. This is and another... what I don't like about the whole thing, like, when they brought Bray Wyatt in, okay, who did he feud with first? John Cena. Where is he now? Nobody cares oh, we, about we him. We all know this conversation. We all but, know this conversation. But. Well, I'm just saying, like, if I would have done it, like, I would have brought Kevin Owens in and had him feud with Orton first. Or had him feud with somebody else first before feeding him to Cena. That's all I'm saying. Because yeah. now, like, once you get done with Cena, where do you go? Well, it depends on who the baby face is. Because, like, it's pretty... The idea of the heel is to be taken down at some point by the baby face, right? Okay, you can make yeah. a big you can make a big star out of a heel, but you know when it really boils down to it, the whole objective of uh, wrestling is that the baby face goes over at some point. The big payoff, the the, the baby face wins, um, making the people happy. So it's kind of hard within that sort of context to say take a guy like Kevin Owens um, and and sort of give him a win to sort of solidify his like star status no if anything he's in a position to lose um and the baby face goes over um, i suppose i didn't really think about that aspect yeah and that's the thing i mean he would have to be a baby face for him to actually get a push but you have to take a consideration even though he lost he still was in a super high profile feud who where he actually got a win and and he actually put John Cena in a lot of peril for most for the most part. They say wrestling is it surrounded by wins and losses. It, it isn't a sport of wins and losses. It's a sport about, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a showcase. It's it's a storyline uh, about um, good and evil, right? But all sure. of, but all of a sudden we as marks we get upset because of the win loss thing. And I go wait a minute when did that happen <laughs> you know it's not about wins and losses like rick flair probably has way more losses than he has wins right but in today's wrestling world in order at least for me and where i come from as a wrestling fan if you don't win matches i'm not going to care about you that's why i do not like dean ambrose right now and i could care less about him and i know right because he's a baby face who just he he can't get over at at any cost. He can't get over Yeah, it. and I understand the whole baby face in peril gimmick of, oh, he can't get a win, and eventually... No, he's a like, loser. <laughs> yeah, and people ev eventually will, like, just keep watching him because they know that eventually it's going to come, but to me, and you just said it, he's a loser because that's all he does. Yep. And even when he wins... I'm still going to say, okay, he won one match. It doesn't change the fact that he's a loser. And he's never in peril. Yeah. Ever. But, um, so, the return of Brock Lesnar. And the main event of SummerSlam is um, Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. We haven't talked about this since it was announced, correct? Uh, no. Okay. Well, because I have my thoughts, but I want to hear your thoughts on it first. I'm indifferent. I just go, I just hope this, I hope it's, a, I mean, when it boils down to it, I hope it's a brawl. I hope it's not like Suplex City because I don't, I don't, the same, the same thing with Hogan when he was talking about how he wanted to face Cena. I was like, I do not want to witness a murder in the ring, okay? So I don't want to witness a murder <coughs> in the ring for this. So, you know, they got enough writers back there to be able to make that into um, more of a brawl to say, you know, Suplex City. Um, and I look at Brock Lesnar and I look at Undertaker. Undertaker looks very old. This uh, uh, suspension of disbelief is probably ch my. This is the most challenging of that thing ever. Um, yeah. When you say take the age difference and uh, the Undertaker's appearance, but the Undertaker's the Undertaker. And one of the conversations I had with P 
Pete, with Jake on Peter and Jake is um, that we we as wrestling fans we have to resort to our um, disbelief to the idea that that Taker isn't he's Taker he's not an old man he's a actual cartoon character he's a superhero he doesn't age he's still this he's still like a menacing uh, very threatening character for when he shows up you know there's time to worry rather than see and I disagree I know I'm just saying I mean I I'm telling myself that I have to not see what I see and take it for what it is, him as the undertaker okay. in this. Because if I see him as old man taker, then yeah, I'm going to sit back and I'm going to actually be more worried about the whole situation than I am looking forward to a, a entertaining feud into a match. Um, that's all I'm saying. I can't, you know, sure. it would ruin it for me. I don't want to ruin it. I don't want it to ruin it. I'm looking at the Undertaker as if it's fucking 1992. That's I'm looking at him as if it's that going on, rather than with rose-colored sunglasses, basically. Basically, but you you, you see you see what I'm saying, man. Um, yeah. See, and the way I look for look at it is, I haven't cared about the Undertaker since the streak ended. Doesn't it long because ago? because without the streak, it doesn't he doesn't matter. Not just not saying that he all he was was a streak because that's not true. He was still he's still a great wrestler and he's still Hall of Fame worthy. He's I believe a five time WWE champion, four or five times. Hey, Hall of um, but, Fame. But the biggest thing that the casuals know him for is the streak, and now that it's not there, it's very hard to get any into anything that he does. And this about his match with Brock Lesnar. At SummerSlam, okay. My question is, why is it happening now versus last year at SummerSlam when they easily could have done it? And they're almost acting, at least from what I saw last Monday, they're completely ignoring the fact that WrestleMania or that the Undertaker faced Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania. So it's almost like. They're trying to make us forget about an entire year and a half programming that they did, um, which WWE does all the time, and trying to make us feel stupid and forget things, which we don't, or most of us don't anyway. I'm just, I said this last Monday when I was live tweeting the show that after the segment that, or after the segment they had where they brawled, yeah, and the Undertaker said, or Brock Lesnar said, "I will kill you." Mm-hmm. And the Undertaker said, "You're going to have to." Yeah, I love that. I was like, "That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen in recent memory from WWE." And I really want to be into this match, but I have a few opinions. I mean, if you're going to do this match, for one, Undertaker's winning. There's no doubt in my mind, unless Brock Lesnar just kills him again. But the Undertaker is winning. I'm 90% sure of it. The only the only way Brock could win is perhaps Sting makes an interference and costs Undertaker the match, which could set the tone for, or set seeds for, or plant seeds for their match, or a match between Sting and Undertaker at WrestleMania 32. Look at you fantasy okay. booking. If You're the, sad, the, sad man. Look at you. If the, Undertaker, if the Undertaker loses, or if the Undertaker were to win then they're going to have to have one more match at WrestleMania. To, because WWE likes to do um, feuds in threes. So we're going to get, if The Undertaker beats Brock at SummerSlam, you know that we're going to get a third match out of those two at Mania, and then the Sting-Undertaker match that most people want to see will be off the table. So what and, do you, what do no, you I'm not trying to fantasy book because I hate that, and I, I like to enjoy wrestling for what's there currently versus what could happen. But this is something that actually could happen. I'm only poking you, bro. So no, I know. But um, what do you think is going to happen tonight with Brock's uh, appearance? Or like, what what do you think the, because he's he's coming back. I mean, he's back tonight, and 
obviously Paul Heyman's going to do a bunch of talking. And um, but what do you think the focus is going to be? Um, and do you think the Undertaker will make an appearance the week after to sort of follow up? Um, what, um, what Paul and Brock has to say tonight? I don't know what Paul will say tonight. I know that Brock probably won't say much because he's not a microphone guy. Uh, besides the one-liners of say something stupid, Paul, or that's my manager, or anything else that he has said, or whatever. But I don't think Brock will say anything. I think Paul Heyman is going to be the one to try to sell this match, and I don't know how he's going to go about doing it. But either way, like the way I see it, we get Brock tonight, we get Undertaker next week, and then the go-home show on August 17th, which I will be at live. Hopefully we get a face-off. Hey, check this out. I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum on on, on that. I think Brock is going to talk. I think Brock is going to talk a lot. For what I can see and what this is all about, this is very personal. I don't think Paul Heyman can say anything to to the effect of how how Brock actually feels. Like, A, uh, he cost him the belt, right? B, that skirmish was very intense. If you're shouting at somebody, I'm going to kill you at least three or four times. That's personal shit. Like they you know, we we don't see this too often. So yeah. so what they're building right now is like this is this is this is more than just a friendly competition between two wrestlers. This is like, you know, you came in my house, you put your feet on the table, you fucking grab my wife's tits kind of thing. And I feel like we're gonna get a Brock that we haven't seen in quite some time, or if ever at all, in terms of like talking on the mic and really making it extremely personal because they got to sell this fucking thing big time. And See, and I don't know if you put it to me like that, which you just did, and if you put it that way, I don't know how good Brock Lesnar's microphone skills are. It doesn't matter. So I don't know. I don't know if he'll be able to convey the emotion that they want. It doesn't matter. I think he's just going to say something, and he's going to sound really angry, and we're going to fucking just go insane. I, I really, okay. think, I really think so. I think so. I think this is, this is basically, this is MMA time in terms of like him talking. Like you know, this is UFC time because it's not like he had Paul Heyman at his UFC fucking weigh-ins and stuff or interviews having him talk for him um i think he has it in him but it's not like he has to say anything grand i think he just has just has to say something and be really really upset um for me to be like holy shit is he gonna kick my ass <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm gonna move away from my like computer screen because i'm thinking he's gonna reach through that son of a bitch and choke me like no i that's that's what i'm hoping for that's what i'm hoping for um and I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited about it. And I'm excited about this feud. I, I'll say. I, I'll, I'll admit. I'm excited about this feud. Um, they've done a great job so far. And one, it, it just boils down to how it ends. And uh, I, it, it's funny. It's not like I'm going to go run to fucking DraftKings and place a wager. <laughs> because it's really one of those up in the air situations. There's so many different ways they can go. Um do they do a clean finish? Do a you know? Uh, do one person go over or one person doesn't? I mean, they're on the road to WrestleMania 32. There's a lot of uh, what's the, shaky ground in terms of how you want to position your big money draws, um, and it's pretty sensitive. Yeah, it's pretty shaky ground to have either Brock Lesnar go over clean or even uh, Undertaker going clean because it really affects those two big money draws moving forward to to Dallas, Texas. Um, it, it's weird. It's really, it's really, uh, it's a screwy situation, you know. No one comes out of this, no one come out, comes out of this looking good unless they bring in the top dogs to write it, to write it all out. You see what I'm saying? Sure. And even for the Sting, because Sting is not appearing, apparently Sting is not appearing at all at SummerSlam. 
Um, that's the talk. Well, if that's the talk, then that's fine. But I th- think there's still there's still time to do that match and book that match if they want to get the ball rolling early because they need that ma- they need the match between Undertaker and Sting on the card at next year's WrestleMania. Yes. In order to sell that venue and. I don't care how they do it. It just needs to get done. And shit in, um, in Dallas, they need Shawn Michaels. They need Stone Cold. They need motherfucking. <laughs> they need Mike. Tyson. I don't think they're gonna get Stone Cold. I know. I'm, I mean, I'm just saying in general. I'm, I'm, I'm being like facetious. Uh, but yeah, they're gonna they're, they're gonna need a lot of heavyweights going into that to where I don't even see anybody from the roster now even sniffing a match. You know. All hands on deck, um, but not, but not the people on the main roster. I think the only other person off today's roster now that would probably make it to WrestleMania 32 will be John Cena, Triple H, um, and by a long shot, Randy Orton. Yeah, <laughs> a long shot. You know, it's not gonna be no Kevin Owens. It's not gonna be no Cesaro. There's not going to be even a big show. There's not going to be a fucking Roman Reigns. Maybe, maybe Roman Reigns. I think he has a better chance of making WrestleMania 32 than Randy Orton. I think Randy Orton is going to be there. There's no doubt in my mind, but what he does is going to be forgettable because that's kind of the role that he's been in for the longest time. And I think... There's going to have to be some super negotiation. Even though Dana White's being an asshole to keep Ronda Rousey from the WWE and he's talking a lot of shit, that guy still is a businessman. He's very much a businessman. And Even if Ronda Rousey has to breach her contract in order to do the, what she wants to do at WrestleMania 32, she will do that. I don't think she will breach her. I think, I think cooler heads will prevail. I think Dana White's going to be approached with a... Uh, with an offer you can't refuse. Um, I think everything's going to be lined out to where everyone's safe, everything's cool, and we will get Ronda Rousey versus Stephanie McMahon. I really think it's going to happen. If if not like a match, at least another spot like they did at WrestleMania. Like, just something. Because it's an intrigue. She's an intrigue. It would have to be a match, though. Yeah, I know, I know. Because if you do the spot like you did this year and then lead to another spot that's going to be next year, that's not a payoff. Yeah. The We already had the start of it. We The payoff has to be a match, whether or not that's a singles match between Rousey and McMahon, Stephanie McMahon or a mixed tag match between Rousey, The Rock, Stephanie, and Triple H, mm-hmm. then a match needs to happen. Involving those two. Yeah. And I would almost go with a mixed tag match idea because, A, I know people want to see The Rock take on Triple H one-on-one at WrestleMania. I don't think we need to see that because we've seen them wrestle enough as is. What? Like like 10 years ago? Yeah. Like, but I think The Rock and Triple H could be used in this match to enhance it because if they're not there, no one... Everyone's not. No one's gonna care, because wrestling fans, all wrestling fans, do not watch MMA. Yeah, I don't but watch most MMA. of the casuals. I watch it occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But most of the casuals will not know who Ronda Rousey is. Oh, I guarantee you, there were a lot of people at WrestleMania 31 last year that did not know who Ronda Rousey oh, was. Oh, I'm sorry. I think right now Ronda Rousey's in a situation where she's transcending the sport. Um, especially in a very, like, I would say women's, like, I, I wouldn't, I don't want to throw the F word around, but in a very feminist driven market t- today, um, she's a household name. Ronda Rousey's a household name. Like, very much, she's as much of a household name as The Rock to a certain extent. Um, in MMA, at least. I, I think in I think the ca- I think just the casual. I mean, she's water. She's like she's like water cooler conversation. You know, like people are at their job talking about Ronda Rousey today. People are like online going back and forth, posting things on Facebook. 
their Twitter accounts are flooded. Their Instagrams are flooded with this this Ronda Rousey person. Um, at some point, you're gonna hear something about Ronda Rousey, so or see what she's doing. I mean, she still needs to work on her like, um, I guess her endorsements and shit. You know, that's one thing that she's lacking. Like. Uh, mainstream like endorsements it's not like Nike's stepping out and saying hey look at this person or even Gatorade is stepping out and saying hey look at this person which is hurting her popularity status no doubt but I think even without that I think she does pretty well with her popularity status I, I, and maybe it's just me I mean maybe I'll live in either, this, maybe I'll live either in this way state. if you um, I'm not that big of a fan of her I think she's highly overrated, to be honest. Oh, yeah, of course. And the reason I say that is because a lot of the opponents that she has been given have sucked. Yeah. So her being undefeated means nothing to me. And the person she just fought Saturday, she already fought her before. Yeah. The only person that might be able to get give her competition is Chris Cyborg Justino, and she needs to get off steroids, and I don't know if she can perform without steroids yeah but at the same time she has to come down i think she has to come down like yeah 20 pounds or some shit yeah it's but ridiculous. um unheard of that's the only fight that i could, could legit see her losing and i want to see her lose um but her like her record has never really been that impressive to me because she hasn't like all of her opponents haven't been world-class athletes exactly exactly and so you know all right Let's move forward. I don't remember. I think we focus enough on Ronda Rousey for one fucking podcast. But um. Oh, um. One thing I want to say before we move on is that okay, Ronda Rousey's undefeated. If she goes into WrestleMania in a one-on-one match with Stephanie McMahon, my biggest fear is that Stephanie McMahon and Vince McMahon are going to have her lose that match, and then she's going to look like shit to the entire MMA community. Because she lost a match that was predetermined. Did Mayweather lose the Big Show? No, but that was years ago. I know, right? Did uh, did did uh, did Tyson go down clean at some point? No, but again, that was years ago. No, did, and we're did, dealing did, with Vince McMahon, who's senile. Did Maria Menudos go down? Who's that? Uh, she's like uh, Hollywood access. Chick, she was in the WrestleMania. Um, she was in the WrestleMania not too long ago, but like you know, she's like not even a wrestler. She she went over. Um, so yeah, like one thing that the WWE doesn't do is put put their own people over. Like did Vince McMahon go go over Donald Trump? Like that's just not like something. No, because that wasn't an actual match. I know, but I'm saying. But you see what I'm saying though, like. There's no way in hell Ronda Rousey would be put in a situation to have Stephanie McMahon go over. No, no way in hell. That's not how the WWE works when dealing with like high-profile uh, athletes and superstars outside of the WWE. Um, they always have them go over. Um, if anything, just to get her in on the card is good enough for the McMahons. And well, then I don't need to see the match anyway. And Stephanie McMahon would gladly, gladly take an arm bar. Gladly. Take an arm bar. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't. I don't think. Okay, here's another aspect of it, and then we'll yeah. go on from that. But if Stephanie McMahon lasts any longer than 30 seconds with Ronda Rousey in a wrestling match, then there's a problem. Well, they're have fun with it. They're gonna have some fun with it. They're gonna actually make it seem like all the divas are gonna come out to jack. But her. it's gonna be a joke. Yeah, it's gonna be funny. But like, hey, man, it's a storyline. It's just what to be fun. It's what to be shits and giggles. It's not. The but end. it's gonna make Ronda Rousey look like shit. If no, she it's gonna support. make her actually. No, because... It's gonna make her actually look good towards future endeavors like film and entertainment. Like, like yes, if this goes over where and she well and she plays a really good part in the dramatics of say whatever imaginary or fictional uh feud that her and mcmahon could have it could actually make her look good in front of the camera as a personality now i make this quick yeah so all of a sudden stephanie man comes out she looks like she's like super confident and all that shit and she's only super confident because she has a bunch of 
fucking divas that are going to surround a ring and make it seem like they're going to attack Rousey. But yet, but then the divas are actually going to turn on fucking McMahon. It's like, yo, we're not fucking with this bitch. She's a fucking, she's, she's psycho. <laughs> so fuck you, uh, Stephanie. Um, go get her, uh, Rhonda. It's kind of thing. I, I see that kind of thing playing out, you know. Uh, they did that shit with like, uh, with the... Uh, with McMahon versus um, uh, Bret Hart, like uh, four years back, when he tried to like turn the family on Bret, like as if he had the upper hand, but in fact it was a ruse, and then they joined Bret, and then that was the most uncomfortable fucking match we'd ever seen out live for him and that fucking crowbar. Well, anyway, you, you get my point. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like they're good at recycling and old ideas and stories. You know, <laughs> they will go back to the well on the most obvious fucking storyline. So, uh, either way, so Stone Cold tonight was supposed to have Hulk Hogan on. Are you excited about the podcast with uh, Paige? No, I'm not even gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch um, it for journalism. Are they still doing it? Because I had heard a rumor that they were gonna postpone it and do something for Piper tonight on the network. No, it's on. It's on. It's on. dot com. Okay. The well, episode. dot com is official. All right. Yeah, I'm probably not gonna watch it. Cause... I'm. A, I'm gonna watch it for uh, journalistic purposes. So you're watching it to watch Paige? No, I'm gonna watch it. Yeah, I'm. I'm not like the biggest. I, I like Paige, I guess. You know, I like I like I like pale girls. Yeah, she's cool, but I don't. Uh, no, I, I'm more of a I'm more of a Naomi kind of guy, man. If Naomi was on it, uh, I don't think I'd be wearing pants watching. Uh, that's too much information for me, but okay. You get over. It. <laughs> but yeah, I think I think it's just going to be an awkward conversation, and knowing Stone Cold, he's going to bring up Hogan. He's going to bring him up at some capacity. Well, I think it's interesting because I didn't really think about it, but, like, a lot of people were saying, oh, they were going to have Hogan on. Then from Hogan, they went from Paige, and I was trying to th- make a connection in my head, and nothing was coming. But then the other day, I thought, well, Hogan was probably supposed to talk about Tough Enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, totally and Paige is a judge, so she's probably going to be basically, it's probably going to be the same thing with or without Hogan because it's probably going to be about Tough Enough. But if that's the case, then I would have not had Paige. I would have had Daniel Bryan on the show. You have to take a consideration. And I think Stone Cold, being Stone Cold, if you listen to his podcast and his conversations or interviews with certain people, he's not as much as a company man you like to think that he is. And that's what's great about the Stone Cold podcast is that, like, okay, he brought up China, right? Um, he cut a promo about facing Brock Lesnar. He 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 talked about Cesaro to Vince and why he could get over. Like you gotta. T- if it was Jericho, man, I wouldn't give a fuck. I didn't. I don't even still. I still haven't watched the second of the Jericho Stephanie podcast. I haven't watched any of them with oh. Jericho because I don't care. Do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor. You're gonna be kicking yourself in the ass if you don't watch this interview. I think, I think it's gonna be a very uncomfortable interview. It is gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. You're talking about the one tonight. Yes, I think it's gonna be great. I think it's gonna be gold because you're dealing with Stone Cold, and I think taking someone like Paige, he's gonna try to you know find out. We're gonna find out a lot about Paige. We're gonna find a lot out about Paige, and. He's going to bring up Hogan. He's going to totally bring up Hogan. And it's going to be wrestling gold because we don't know. She's not like this seasoned interviewer, you know what I'm saying? And and I think it's going to be something uh, we're going to be clamoring about for at least a week or two. So, we'll see. Moving on. We you So, I, I hit you up uh, three nights ago, Mr. Condescending. You don't know much about wrestling. That's what you say to me. That shit, <laughs> that shit pissed me off. Uh, they just had a fucking pay per view, uh, ROH. Um, that was correct. Called, that was called uh, Death Before Dishonor. Death Before Dishonor. Out of five, what do you what did you rate it? 
I can't rate it because I didn't see it. You haven't seen it yet, bro? No. And I called you bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then I then we can't even talk about it. You don't want to watch it? No, I just haven't seen it. I haven't gotten a chance because of with the G1 going on right now and everything else that's going on, I just haven't gotten around to it. Oh yeah, G1. I I I'll wait till uh, Russell Kingdom. Jet uh, G1 shit is just it's it's overwhelming. I, I I watched the entire thing last year. I can't do it this year, so I'm just picking and choosing what I want to watch. Because it's it, last year it was 12 nights. This year it's 18. That's, so that's too much. But there's a lot of good wrestling coming from it, and it, it's. I don't think it's gonna go down as legend like legendary status like last year's tournament did because last year's tournament was fucking great. Who won it, Naito? Who won it last year? Last year, yeah. Okada. Okada won it. Okay. Yeah, because and then he went to Wrestle Kingdom Nine and beat Tanahashi. No, he the, lost to Tanahashi, bro. No, he, or yeah, you're right. And then he, but then he beats AJ Styles for the belt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. At one of their shows, I can't remember the name of. But oh, yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think Tanahashi, or I don't think Dominion. It was win called it. Dominion. Yeah, I don't think Okada's gonna win it though again because he doesn't need to. I think the front runner to win this year is gonna be Kota Ibushi. Kota Ibushi, wow. I'm thinking he's like I see. I see. I don't know. Ibushi, really? Yeah, he was supposed to be in last year's tournament, and they had to replace him with Hanma. And I think that he would have gone a long way in winning, or not. He wouldn't have won last year, but he would have might have been one of the top guys in it. But I think Abushi's going to win it this year. I think I think Okada will retain. Um, but if he wins it, then he can't. He can't. There's no way he's going to win it. You're talking about. So, I'm talking about. Re, I'm talking about retaining the belt, not uh, at, at Wrestle Kingdom, not uh, winning G1. Oh, okay, you talk about who's going to win. Abushi's going to win yeah. G1. Okay. okay. I was talking about Abushi's going to win the 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 entire G1. Okay. But I don't think Okada's even going to make it to Wrestle Kingdom 10 with the belt. He's because it's a it. long time from now. He's going to make it. Yeah, you, I don't think you he is. Bet, you bet you. You bet you. He's my favorite wrestler in that company. I don't think he's going to make it. He's going to make it. He's definitely going to make it with that belt. Um, but here's the thing. It's the positioning right now of Naito and his heel turn. Um, and that's when things get real interesting uh, moving forward because that's going to be a big push for him. Uh, there's going to be a big push for him um, in this heel role. Well, it's a heel turn in a way, but it's not It's not anything new that he hasn't been doing because he's, he's been doing this in CMLL. Yeah. So New Japan is just taking this that concept from CMLL and adapting it to their style. Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's so, all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I mean, a lot of people who aren't familiar with CLL or how you want to pronounce it, CMLL. Yeah. Um, that don't know this about. I mean, like new fans like me who don't know that, um, because we're not you know wrestling uh, snobs like you are. You're supposed to know everything, damn it. No, dude, I'm sorry. I mean, I I watch it now. I don't feel like I have to watch it. I just go like, wow, you know, on top of ROH and Lucha Underground and NXT, I have a whole other part of my brain that I can enjoy a, a certain type of wrestling. Uh, that's why I watch it. And I still don't think people are, what's the word? They, they don't feel obligated to watch it. You know, there's no obligation to know who the fuck Okada is and Abushi and Naito and fucking Tanaha and uh well that's their problem then, no, Nakamura like we don't have to know these names I mean as wrestling fans it's fine it's okay it's okay I mean I know it now I mean I, I'm still a newbie I'm still as green to the fucking New Japan product as say anybody but I've actually invested some time into it some well invested time into it and it was a quick learn I thought it would be much harder actually to 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 know the names and things, but I caught on really quickly. 
One thing that really bothers me about this tur- the tournament this year is I don't. Did you watch the tournament last year? Or no, I, 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 dude, I don't have enough time or patience okay. to, to, to try. Last to... year, last year, the entire tournament was twelve nights, and it was full production for every single show. But now every other night, so the odd night or the the odd nights are full production. The even nights, so two, four, six, and eight, like going forward are one camera shows oh wow so and that kind of takes away from my enjoyment from it because like i didn't even like i've never if it's an odd number or if it's an even number show i'm not even going to bother watching it because i can't get into a show that only has one camera and no commentary oh wow yeah well i mean I, i could probably watch it i just go it's so it's so overwhelming it's like you it's it's a lot of matches it's not enough time in the day I mean, I, you got to be unemployed or, like, <laughs> work from home. Well, last year I was, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. But this year I am not. Okay. So I'm just saying you got to have a lot of free time on your hand. And you got you to gotta have a lot of Red Bull <laughs> in your system uh, to sort of keep up. I thought I was going to die last year. All, yeah, dude. 120 matches? I could have. Ima- dude, I have no. You better show me the fucking highlights. I'll watch the highlights. And that's it. Like, I don't need. I don't need to have the. Uh, All you really need to do badge. is watch the finals. Yeah. Okay. So the last thing, did you watch uh, Lucha? Did you watch the Ultima Lucha, the f- part one? Part one, yes, I did. I did a review for it for my or both sites that I contribute to. I was surprised because I was looking forward to the card and I saw the first one and I was like, I didn't go in having high expectations, and then. I was floored. I, I thought that was really fun, like extremely fun. Uh, That's all that Lucha Underground has been since it launched on October 29th. It's so fun. So like, like, like the trios match, the fucking Mac versus uh, Cage. That really, I had low expectations on. That. Some bitch ended up being fantastic. I knew that match was going to deliver because both those guys in PWG are really good. God so. almighty. When he did the stunner, man, that was, that pop from that crowd when he did that shit. Oh my God. I actually just, I went back on it because I, you know, I watched the upload. So I just went back just to that moment, maybe like 10, 12 times just to listen to the pop that that crowd made when he fucking like stunned his ass. And that looked good. The only thing is that it didn't get the pin. So if you could tell, you could tweet Stone Cold all day that someone did your move. Well, did he pin him? Then fuck him. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine you probably heard somebody, like you would have heard something from Stone Cold, like big up Mac, if he would have actually used it for the pin. And you know Stone Cold, he's like, he's on a whole, um, Hit between him and JR is on a whole like mission to like call out all these like false finishes on these big moves, you know? Like so. Yeah. Oh well. Um, what else was on that card? Um, it was Drago versus uh, Hernandez. Yeah. Um, that was all right. It was funny. I think it was more funny than it was a great match. Yeah, I, like, I thought this week, or last week's episode was good, but I didn't really, like, there's not too much that I remember from it, because, or, I do remember it, but you know what I mean, it's not something that I'm going to talk about, like, months from now. Yeah, yeah. Because I think it was basically like a, it did what it needed to do, it was kind of like a lower tier to get you or to get the fans ready for the two hour finale oh yeah basically the pre-show it was like yeah it was a pre-show and and it did do a great job it did a great job um and helico is a fucking idiot he's an idiot who and helico oh that guy's a madman he's an idiot like what are you doing man that guy's awesome that guy's an idiot. He's fucking awesome. He's gonna he's gonna kill himself, man. That's three straight fucking. That's his third off of the fucking top row shits, man. And it almost got ugly because he jumped over the crowd to do that spot. Oh. I thought 
I thought he's only done it twice. No, he's done it three times. That's his third time. Okay. Because the first one, the first one was a was a splash, uh, you know, a, a body, front body. The cross sec- body. Yeah, cross body. The second one was a back bump, kick. I don't count that one because he got knocked off of something. What are you talking? No, he ran and jumped off of that fucker and kicked and did a full on back bump. Oh yeah, you're right. Okay, never mind. I was thinking. He's gonna hit that shit and his heart's gonna stop beating, man. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, well, it's his problem, not ours. I know, I know, but he's good. Apparently, uh, uh, WWE is uh, interested in him. That worries me. Yep. But he's apparently he's locked down for like seven years to Lucha Underground. Say, take it if he. If well, Triple A. Oh, Triple A. Okay, Triple really? A. Yeah. But, um, and the nice thing about this week is. Uh, you've got Ultima Lucha on Wednesday, and then this coming Sunday is Triple Mania uh, 23, I think it is. Uh-huh. So, live on pay-per-view. What so. was the what was the uh, main event? Uh, why am I forgetting? The main event of uh, last Wednesday? Uh-huh. Uh, I could probably go back and try to look. I can't it was, remember. It wasn't Drago and Hernandez, was it? No, it was... I think it was... Are you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. I thought you were checking. Okay. I am looking. Um, this might be easier if I do this. Fuck. Go to eyesonthering.com and then I can find out. Sorry for, okay, sorry for so, that wait, people. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, it was the first match was Cage and the Mac. Second match was the Disciples of Death um, versus Angelico, Ivelisse, and Son of Havoc. We all know what happened there. Mm -hmm. The third match was the main event, Hernandez versus Drago. Um, That was the main event. Yeah, they got a lot in 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 one hour, man. In uh, basically 42 minutes. They got a lot in. Uh, Yes and no. If you were to compare that to this last Saturday's Ring of Honor episode, you would say that Ring of Honor's episode was... <clears throat> Excuse me, a lot more of a mess than uh, Lucha Underground's was. Yeah, they didn't need that. Um, they didn't need that uh, promo. That that part with um, the decade. That was a waste of everybody's time. But BJ yep. Whitmer and the whole like gauntlet thing and the the drama between um, C- C- how you say it? C- Carino? Carino's son and all that shit. That was that was a waste of everyone's time. Well, but you know where it's leading. Everyone by now should know where they're going with it. Tell me, oh wise one. The end game to where they're going with this whole thing with the decade versus and Colby Carino versus Steve Carino is a match between BJ Whitmer and Steve Carino at final battle. They must 2015. be they must be watching fucking Lucha Underground over there, too. Because you got Vampiro coming back for a match, and you got Carino coming back. Like, what Carino's fuck? been wrestling, though, so... Oh, I thought he wasn't wrestling no more. No, he wrestles occasionally. Okay. But Ian Hodgkinson or Vampiro hasn't wrestled in 13 years since yeah. WCW folded. You looking forward to that? Uh, not really, because I don't know how much... I like the story of the match... Like how they're leading up to it, or which match are you talking about? You're talking about the Vampiro Van- versus um, Pentagon match. Yes, I'm definitely invested in the story yeah. aspect of it, but I'm not sure how well the match is going to come across. Well, they got to be mad careful. Pentagon is going to have to work harder than he's ever worked before because Vampiro probably can't even move anymore. Yeah. And that doesn't he does, so because he, he looked up anyway. Doesn't he have hep as, as well? What? Vampiro. Doesn't he have hep? I don't think so. I think he has hep, man. I think that was one of the reasons why he got out. I don't remember ever hearing that. Okay. I, I, well, maybe you know, I, I, maybe it's hearsay, speculation, whatever. But I thought that was one of the main reasons why he stepped away. 
very much like doesn't Nigel McGuinness the, then the, why he started? yeah that's why he left okay. but or that's that was the rumor why he left but he didn't have it oh, okay okay right. so uh, anything quickly you want to mention about last week's NXT or did you not see it I watched it but I didn't it was kind of a blah episode yeah there was nothing memorable about it yeah okay so I'm glad that you think the same thing because yeah i watched it on thursday last week and i just wasn't really feeling it yeah the only thing that was really memorable was um alexa bliss that's her name yeah she slapped the shit out of uh the uh bald villains and the match between dana brooke and charlotte flair um but uh, well we know that uh, Charlotte can carry a turd to a wrestling match, so, oh, yeah. or a passable wrestling match, so oh, that's yeah. a good thing. Uh, and, then, um, and, and that was my favorite. Very my awkward. favorite part about the last week's NXT, though. Let me let I, though, I can already know. Uh, what Gable? No. Oh. Bullfit. Bullfit. Uh, yeah, dude. That shit was hilarious. Dude, he's getting over. He that's that's gonna get him so over, man. Like, it's already working. Like, to turn him from, like, you know, after his feud with um, with old boy with the tattoos. Like, he was just going to go into obscurity. And then they found something. And it's working. I still don't think he makes it to the main roster. Oh, no. No way in hell he makes it to the main roster. If but he, at least he's got something in developmental that can possibly work. Like, him, I don't think, is going to make it to the main roster. I don't think Baron Corbin's going to make it to the main roster either. Oh, they got big plans for Baron Corbin, man. See, and I... he's He's got a great look. And he's got the look, or he's got the presence and everything that they want. He has the tood. <laughs> but I don't think... Like, his 16-second squash matches aren't really doing anything for me. Well, I think... well. He's no Goldberg, definitely. He's no Goldberg. But well, Goldberg some, sucks too. But 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 here's the thing. He's no Goldberg, okay? Um, but there's something. They got something there, and maybe he's not in a position to showcase what he actually knows in these rings. That they're probably preserving it, but he's probably working his ass off. I mean, he is an ex football player. Football players learn the craft really well, you know. If they put, you know, they're probably wanting to fastest learning people on the planet when it comes to like physical activity that's why there's so many like dances with the stars that's why there's so many more football players that win than other people like they learn so quickly you look at a guy like moose who's picking up his game dude a year ago i was like who the fuck is this guy yeah he sucked he is so but, much better i mean it's yeah like, he, like first time i saw bounds. him i was like he's a poor man's Uha Nation, but now I wouldn't even say that. It's no comparison. He has vastly improved. Thing. He has his own thing going, and I go, I would have never saw that coming. But again, uh, football players, man, they learn. They definitely pick up, and I think that's why Vince McMahon are, are very is, has always been high on ex football players. The fact that like it's in their it's in their DNA to take order and learn physical activity. At a very fast pace, do you know? Unless you're Steve McMichael. Oh, God. We need to bring that fucker up. (laughs) (laughs) God. Why did you bring him up? Jesus, that guy was a joke. Um, But either way, um, one more thing about NXT. Samoa Joe has new music. Yeah, I heard that. Finally. But but nothing. nothing, um, What was I about to say about... Uh, nothing. That's nothing. That was really nothing. I guess because they're cleaning house with all the divas, and you know we're still waiting for a time a uh, to heal up. We're still waiting for um, uh, we're still waiting for uh, Sami Zayn. So man, NXT is gonna go through um, a huge transition. A, whole, a huge transition. NXT Takeover is gonna be pretty sweet though. I know. I know. I know. Hopefully, uh, Jushin Thunder Liger versus uh, Tyler Breeze. Yeah. Yeah, they teased, they teased that in the one skit um, from last Tuesday. He's like, who's your partner? He's like, be careful what you ask for. So that was pretty 
Yeah. Um, I don't like, like, I don't know if you heard about this, but the only reason why uh, NXT or WWE NXT booked Jushin Liger was basically to stick it to ROH. They are pissed at each other, man. But, so I don't like that aspect of it, but I think Jushin Thunder Liger in a WWE ring for the first time ever, that's going to be historic. But it's going to be. To it. But it's going to be at a comedy. It's going to be at a comedy thing, though. I don't. I don't no, see, it's not. Uh, it is. I think it's going to be. I mean, that's what the the matches I've seen recently. They're not going to waste him like that on NXT. What maybe Lager, the main roster, but they're not going to do that at a at a live takeover. I don't know. I think it's going to be at a, like a, a, a comedy capacity. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I don't be. think so. What? That's all they've been doing with uh, ROH. No, they haven't. You Have mean you to tell me? Matches? You mean to tell me that spot with uh, that spot? It was like the tag match where he ends up getting pinned because he's going out the homegirl's tits. He was a creepy liger. You don't remember that? They no, were, I don't. They were he was they were facing um, I think it was Lager, and I'm I can't I, I'm not sure who his tag partner was, but they were facing the Kingdom. And there was a spot where, um, what's her name? Maria. Maria got up on the apron and was like flashing like her cleavage to Liger. And he kind of. That's one spot. I know, man, but like, I just feel like, I don't know. I, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, if, he, if it is a fucking comedy spot, like, who cares? It'll be fun. I do because it disrespects the legend of Juice and Thunder Liger. Well, it's not like fucking uh, New Japan's been doing that much for him. Well, that's because they've been using him on pre-shows, which is probably the role that he should be used on right now because yeah. he's 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing uh, before we go, uh, the ROH, uh, the uh, Death Before Dishonor, they had a dude in um, up front in Jushin uh, Liger. College. Ultra Liger? So he's a regular? Yeah. Okay, so he was there. He's on he's on uh, Twitter at Ultra Liger. <laughs> Ultra. Okay, yeah, he was there. I had never seen him before because again, I'm... yeah, there's a. Uh, the, um, in fact, I was watching War of the Worlds night two the other day, and there's he was there and he had a sign for there's this guy on Twitter named Elias, and he does like these. Uh, it's he's like an artist, but he's a very bad artist, but I think he does it on purpose. But he had a sign that said Elias, and there was a guy, there was a woman who follows me on Twitter sitting right next to him, and I took a picture of the sign and sent it to all three of these people just so they could see it. But yeah, he is a regular with ROH, or he's a regular fan, I guess you could say, with ROH. Mm-hmm. Not in the vein of, like, Frank the Clown, who's a fucking idiot, but... Um, <laughs> But he, yeah, he's frequently there. Oh, that's, that's what's up. Well, look, let's go ahead and wrap this fucker up and try to get this, I'm going to try to get this uploaded um, before Raw. So if anyone, I guess, you at least got some time. But yeah, um, thank you so much to listening to, uh, maybe this is what, episode five or something? Of, of th- three, maybe? Cause, I don't even know. Yeah, it's like three or four um, of the New Day podcast. Um, get your plug in, bro. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Headliner5. I will be tweeting Raw tonight from my account as well as the Eyes on the Ring account, which you can follow at Eyes on the Ring. Visit EyesOnTheRing.com. Check out the radio show at BlogTalkRadio.com slash Elite Podcast Network. We just had our one-year anniversary, uh, so that is a thing. Otherwise, you can go to Facebook.com backslash eyes on the ring um like us there everything that we post on the website gets posted on facebook so it's your one-stop shop to that and the facebook link is on the website um so you can go there as long as our along with our twitter feed and stuff like that and like i said i'll be tweeting raw tonight from both my account and the Eyes on the Ring account, and I've been challenged, as well as the everyone else from the Eyes on the Ring team, has been challenged to watch a Raw within 
uh, the 95 year, so I have to do that tomorrow. So, but luckily, Raw's back then. We're only 46 minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually um, rewatching um, the Attitude Era. Uh, well, you can have your Attitude Era because it sucked. Well, I'm 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 starting to watch it. I'm just gonna just watch it. Fuck it. I got shit else. How many watch. DQs have you call, have you counted lately? Because I've literally like there was a time when me and my a buddy of mine were watching. I think we watched like four or five. Raws in a row, and there was only like one raw that had like one clean finish. Really, well, in a match, me, everything else was like there was like ninety cues in a row. Yeah, for, for me, it's just a matter of um, just sort of re-educating myself on it because it was like that was around the time where I kind of like stopped watching. Um, yeah. So why not? I mean, it's all that mine. stuff has aged like sour milk. Yeah, uh, yeah, you know, but I don't care. I just just something to do. So, and see if I can remember some things to get some things. Um, and something else. I'll, um, yes. So yeah, we're uh, Peter Jake talks wrestling. Our 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 year anniversary is uh, SummerSlam. That's when I started uh, doing Peter Jake talks wrestling. So that's uh, episode fifty two. We just did forty nine. So in three weeks, uh, we will have our year long anniversary. But um, just in case, because you cut out when you said your uh, Twitter uh, handle, but it's Headliner5. It's at Headliner5. Also, I just want to mention you can uh, get the Elite Podcast Network on Stitcher, on the Stitcher app, if you have an iPhone, uh, by searching Elite Podcast Network. Yes. So go ahead and check that out, guys. Again, you can follow me on Twitter, PJTW Central. And then pjtwcentral.com. I will be doing, if you're listening now, I will be doing a Raw recap. And then the full fucking review for Raw will be this Wednesday, Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling, episode 50. I think 40? 49? I think 49. 49. Episode 49. And uh, that's it, man. Um... Again, thank you so much. If you are listening to the new format of the New Day Podcast, we're going to be Mondays pre-Raw. So if you're listening, thank you so much. Add, subscribe, like, comment, all those things. Thumbs up. Um, do any and everything you can. And support the homie uh, Nathan Newman with all the endeavors that he has as well. And until then, you got any last words? Uh, no, I don't. Just uh, keep listening to the podcast, and we will keep producing them as rapidly and as frequently as we can. All right, and that is a podcast. Enjoy, well, try to enjoy Raw tonight, motherfuckers. Peace. <laughs>